I was a high school dropout. Now, if we look back on our lives, we can think about the choices we've made, decisions that helped shape who we are today. Some of us look at those decisions with a, a feeling of joy and glee, while others look at those decisions with sorrow and pain. I was a high school dropout, and I don't say that to say it so that you can think I'm bragging about it or be boastful about it, but it's to help kind of give you content to my story and my life. I was also a uh, NFL player drafted in the first round. And I attended the University of California, Berkeley, one of the top schools in the country. So I want to tell you about my life as a, the two areas that led me to be a high school dropout, those two subjects, and the same two things that also helped propel me into being a first round draft choice and also to, uh, to go to the University of California, Berkeley. There are two things that I want to talk about, and I'll, I'll narrow it down for the sake of this, and that I want to talk about beliefs and actions. It's like a circle. Your beliefs lead to your actions. Your actions lead to your beliefs. There's no front. There's no end. There's no beginning or ending. It goes in a circle, round and round and round. And some people have positive beliefs. They believe positive things will lead to positive actions, and those positive actions lead to positive beliefs. Some of us have negative beliefs about ourselves, and those negative beliefs lead to negative actions, and those negative actions lead to, lead to negative beliefs, and the circle goes round and around and around. I've experienced both of those, and that's part of my story. I was born in Austin, Texas. I'm one of seven kids. Uh, Austin, Texas is a great place, probably one of the best places out there. But for me as a young man growing up, I have images, things that still stick in my mind of, of people driving in pickup trucks, yelling out at my dad, calling him the N-word. Me as a little kid wondering why they would do something like that, them speeding away, my dad chasing after them, me being angry. My images were, the, the images that I had were of me seeing the haves and the have-nots. And all the people that were the have-nots looking like me, and all the people that were the haves were white. But on the other side of it, I saw great teachers who happened to be white and happened to be my great teachers and great friends. I saw neighbors who happened to be white who were as poor as I was or we were. And so I learned that you can't judge a person by the color of their skin, but by the character and who they are. It doesn't matter. I think sometimes we get caught up in this world and we try to put people in small bubbles and we never look outside or beyond that bubble. So that was my life. And a lot of times your beliefs are created by your uh, environment. My environment was also seeing my parents who were mar or married over 50 years and so I've been married over 30 years. And that's not the only reason I've been married over 30 years and God knows it's a battle but it was also a great example of seeing what's out there. That's your environment. Your beliefs can also be set by your vision, what you see. I was a young man who grew up watching TV all the time. TV was my great escape, my great getaway. And I watched TV all the time. That was my fantasy. I modeled myself after the characters I saw on TV. I was the Incredible Hulk, right? I was, I was, I was quiet withdrawn, didn't say a lot. But when I got angry, I exploded. I was a Hulk running around, and if I think back now, I put so many holes in my parents' walls, you know, it, it was embarrassing, but that was me. I was an incredible Hulk. I was also like Mr. Spark from Star Trek. Live long and prosperous, a lot of you too, old, too young for that, but that was me. I was holding my emotions in. That's what I tried to do. That's what I taught myself. Hold your emotions in. Don't show, don't feel, don't know. I was a child of the twilight zone, thinking that anything's possible. Everything is, 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 is possible. There may be a slight, slight twist, but anything's possible in the world. That was me watching Twilight Zone. But I also watched a lot of educational programs, and so when I went to school, I was ahead of the curve because a lot of the stuff that they were teaching, I already knew. But that can also be a detriment because one, you didn't, you didn't uh, know as much as you thought you know. You, two, you haven't developed the habits to, to learn, to keep going on. And so while I knew a lot of things, I've never, I never developed the habits. You can 
B, your vision can be given to you by what you hear, by the things that you listen to. Imagine a young child whose parents would tell them, you know, you're gonna be somebody, you're special, you're gonna be great, you're gonna be something awesome, you can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, you can be whatever you wanna be. That child grows up feeling that they can be anything that they wanna be. But also imagine a child growing up, never hearing those words, never seeing that in the public, never seeing people on TV who look just like them. That's the environment that I grew up in. And so as I, as I, as I grew up in my junior year of high school, I was playing football. And you know, as an angry kid who wanted to be like Hulk playing football is kind of the natural flow for him. I was playing football, I was doing okay, but I also got into the habit of missing school. And when I missed school, I didn't go out and I wasn't doing anything crazy, but I was at home escaping. That was my watching TV. That was going back to the, my safety zone, watching TV. And it became a habit. And the more you have that habit, the worse it becomes. And so I got to a point where a choice had to be made. It was either the choice of staying in school and getting straight else, dropping, in, dropping out of school, getting your mind right and trying to decide what you want to do, or the coaches were trying to push me in to try to take easy classes so that I could just play football. In my mind, I was like, I'm not dumb, I'm not, I'm not stupid, I'm a smart person, so I'm gonna drop out. I'm gonna drop out, get my mind right, figure out what I wanted to do. As I dropped out of school, you walk around, and by this time, my escape was TV and the weight room. Six foot two, 225 pounds, bench pressing 400 pounds, and walking around with this big afro back then, I was this angry kid, people were scared of me. <laughs> but at the same time, people would look at me and say, well, you're too big to be out of school. You're too big to be doing, not doing this. You're too big to be doing that. They looked at me as though I was dumb, as though I was stupid. You're a dropout, you're not anybody. And for that, I felt that's the way I felt inside. And so the pressure started gaining on me. Parents started saying, well, you need to get up. You need to get up and get out. You need to either, uh, join the military. You gotta do something. You can't sit around the house eating up all your food, eating up all our food, which I did. You can't sit around the house doing nothing, just watching TV. You gotta make a decision. You're gonna have to do something. And you start hearing all the voices and all the world and all the pressure that was on you. So for me, at that time, I was like, the world would be a lot better without me. Why am I here? I don't need to be here. The world would be a lot better place. I wouldn't be a burden to anybody. So unfortunately, I tried to take my life. It didn't work, obviously I'm here, but I tried. And the sad thing is that I tried. But during that time, I got on my knees and I prayed and I said, God, give me, give me something, anything. And so for me, it felt like God was saying to me, Ken, you have a purpose, you have a destiny. There is a reason for you being here. There's a reason you didn't die. There was a reason for you being here. And so for me, once I had that belief, it changed. Everything changed, my action changed. Everything changed based on that belief. And so my belief was that I was here for a purpose, that I had a destiny. My action was go back to school. My action was beyond school was to start working out because I knew that the only way that I would get to college would be to play, would be through sports, at least to do sports. We didn't have the money, we didn't have, I didn't have the grades. The only way to get to a college was sports. When I went around everybody and I told everybody I was gonna go to college, they looked at me like I was crazy. There's no way you're gonna go to college. You were a dropout. There's no college gonna want you. Who are you? What, what are your grades? And for me, my belief kept saying, you can do this. You have a purpose, you have a destiny. So I ended up going back and working out. And every time I worked out, I would work out alone by myself at night and I would train. And when I would train, I would train hard. And I kept saying to myself, you are somebody. You are special. You're worth something. You got to do it. Don't quit. Don't ever give up. Keep going. Keep going on and on and on. And so I kept going on and on and on. And so from that, my action took me to meeting a guy in the gym. And, and he told me about a junior college in Oakland, California. My action took me to a plane to, to leave Austin, Texas, away from my environment, to do something different, get outside of my environment. And so I ended up going to a junior college in Oakland, California. My action allowed me to go to the University of California, Berkeley, one of the top schools in the country. My action allowed me to get drafted in the NFL. I played 11 years in the NFL. I had a good career, longer than most people. It was a great career. But, 
The reality is, is if that you don't check yourself, if you don't have what that change is deep down inside of you, there's always windows of it trying to come back. There's always that, that knock on the door. And so once I stopped playing football, it wasn't because of my choice. I was injured. I got hit, or not got hit, it was several hits, but my leg, I couldn't, I couldn't run anymore, and so I retired in 1999. Now, when I retired, everybody would thought, oh, this is great. And, I, and as I walked around, everybody looked at me and said, Ken, man, oh, you look like you can still play football. You still look great, man. You're still, you're still the man. But for me, in my mind, that voice came back. You're a quitter. You're a loser. You're not good enough. You're too big to do that. You, you, you shouldn't quit. You're a quitter. You quit on the team. You quit on everybody. You're a quitter. So every time I walked around outside and every time someone pointed to me and said, man, Ken Harvey, oh man, you're one of the greatest football players, you were this and that, it was a dagger in my heart because I felt like that voice kept saying, you're a quitter. You quit again. And you had promised yourself you were never going to quit again. You were going to do this. And so that memory can stay in your mind for a long time. And lastly, for me, I did a lot of jobs, I did a lot of things, and they were surfacey type things, but for me, about three or four years ago, I go and I'm like, God, please tell me, what am I supposed to be doing myself? Go back to the same formula that worked before. And I go back and I, and I, and I start reading about Exodus and, and God was telling Moses, what's in your hand? And I thought about my life and I said, you know, what's in my hand? I had written a bunch of children's books and I, I got away from that because I didn't want people to think of me as just a children's book author. I wrote some other books and stories and thrillers, suspenses, I was more than just a children's book author, and I just got away from it. And I went back and I looked at my computer and the book was there. And I said, you know what, it's, it's good. I need to do something with this. I don't want to die. And somebody said, oh, he had these books on his computer. So I called up a friend of mine, the guy who did the artwork for the book, a guy named Terry Crews. He's a, a big time movie star now. He's you know, doing America's Got Talent. He's doing a lot of shows. And he's that man, but he did the artwork for the book when we played together. This is 21 years, almost 21 years later. And he's like, man, this is great. If we do it, let's do this 100%. Let's do it extremely well. And so we redid the book 21 years later. The book has my boys as the characters. Kind of a reversal because back then, I wanted my boys to see that they could do anything. I wanted them to see that they could be those characters. I wanted them to know that they could fly a plane, that they could ride a, uh, on the bus, that they can, they can drive a, a, a boat. They could do anything that they wanted to do. Terry said, let's do this thing 100%. And then out of nowhere, another friend called up and he said, I have this augmented reality company and I want to, I'm trying to do something with my augmented reality company. I want to try to get some publicity. You know, how, do you know of anything? And I was like, well, you know what? Let's put this augmented reality with this children's book and let's create a bridge where young people, instead of just reading to themselves or still just being on their iPads or phones all the time, the parents would have to sit with their kids, at least for the first time, to use the augmented reality with the first time reader book. And it's kind of the bridge between technology and reading. For me, that circle repeated itself. And in everybody's life, it can repeat itself. But for me, that circle repeated itself. And so I had to wake up and realize every day, every moment that you're alive, you have an opportunity to choose which direction you want to go. What do you want to believe in? What do you want to be? Because you can believe in something and you think it's luck, but it's not luck. You put yourself in a position for the right things based on your belief. If you believe that you're worth something, if you believe that you're special, if you believe that you're great, then your actions will lead to that. My actions led me to call Terry and say, hey, let's do this book again. My actions led me to try to do something outside of my normal box, to break down those walls. And those actions led to a belief that, oh, you can do this. Maybe you are a good writer. You start feeding it to yourself, or you can have those negative beliefs. And the circle gets smaller and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter until you don't know where you're going. For me, I try to live my life every day now thinking, what am I gonna believe? What am I gonna believe about myself? Knock out those old voices, bring in the new voice, and believe. I'm Ken Harvey. I was a high school dropout. Thank you.